Good morning, Santee United Methodist Church. How's everyone today? Do you think we're celebrating Valentine's early? No, it's United Methodist Women's Sunday. Woohoo! And we're so excited to be here. Now I have a little joke for you. Why did all the United Methodist women cross the road? Wrong. To go to the bazaar. Okay, keep my, keep my day job, do my puzzles, whatever. Okay, I'm going to go over the announcements. For those of you that like to walk and have some exercise, they're meeting at Walker Preserve at 8 a.m. on Mondays. So come on out and walk. Remember the family ministries that we were going to all bring our gifts in for? That will be on January the 30th. So we want everybody, if you have your items purchased, you can still purchase items on Amazon.com. There'll be the list um, from the link from your newsletter. We have our District Outdoor Youth Movie Night is scheduled for January the 21st. Everybody can come and it's not postponed this time, so bring your chairs, bring your blankets and be prepared to have some fun. Adult Bible Study will be January 24th you're invited for the adult Bible study at 630. It will be held in the sanctuary. They are studying the book of Acts. If you have any questions, um, check the bulletin. There's a phone number that you can call. January 30th is also going to be Noisy Sunday. So if you saved up your change, bring your change with you and we'll have Noisy Sunday. And then there's some items for February. Our blood drive will be February 7th. And there'll be the um, loaded baked potatoes and spud bowl sponsored by our youth. And that will be on February the 13th. Before anyone leaves today, if you can stay, we need your help. I know how much we've all loved seeing the beautiful greens and the lights hanging in the sanctuary, but they do need to come down. So if you can stay and help take down those greens and pack them up, we'd appreciate it. We thank you so much. And now we'll leave it to Jan.
our opening prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we greet you today. We are blessed to gather here in this place to worship you. As we celebrate the service and mission of our United Methodist Women, we also celebrate all the gifts we have received from you, God. As we listen and receive your word and spirit today, let us be strengthened to serve one another in your glory. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn, Come Christians Join to Sing.
Uh, our scripture, the first one's going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. And our second scripture reading comes out of First Peter from the fourth chapter. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whosoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, I would just like to let you know what we're doing this morning. The message is going to be presented by members of the United Methodist Women. And our first speaker will be uh, Marty Smotherman, and she's here to represent the food bank. And um, over the course of several weeks, we've been working on banners that um, kind of outline what each of these uh, missions or um, things that we give to. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Marty. And Marty is the um, president? The vice president and manager of the Santee Food Bank. So she does an excellent job. So I'm going to take the microphone to her. OK, I'm not used to this. <laughs> now, is that better? Down here, right here. Yeah. You want me to hold it for you? Yes. I can do that. Please. Okay. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to brag about the Santee Food Bank because I really am proud of it. Um, but I wanted to share with you that nearly 20 years ago, Pastor West was at the pulpit one Sunday morning and he said that the Santee Food Bank needed volunteers. And Dina Stumer and I looked at each other and said, Hmm, we're going to check it out. And she volunteered with us for a number of years. And like I said, I've been there almost 20. So it's evolving. <laughs> it has been. Um, we're still an all-volunteer, independent, nonprofit organization that has served the Santee community for 39 years. Our volunteers stay, <clears throat> start their day at 6 a.m. and do this for six days a week. Some of them use their private vehicles that they go pick up food at our grocery stores. We're on call at least six days a week. Um, collectively, the number of time and talents that, have given, that are given to the mission is about 16,000 hours a, a year because we all work at home. I push the paper, lots of us do that kind of thing at home too, as well as on site. And right now we have three programs that we manage. And first and foremost is what we call the super pantry distribution. 18 months ago, the San Diego Food Bank approached us with a, a request for a proposal because they had a pilot program called super pantries. And 35 agencies within our county were awarded this grant, money and other things. So we were amongst that. They gave us $20,000 to buy equipment, which was just a godsend for us, freezers, etc. So we're still doing this. And what changed was we had to expand our hours of operations and our days 
to make it you know manageable for the public and we no longer were restricted to serve just c n t so now we serve everybody who comes to us you can live in arizona and come to us really and get food so our numbers are up uh, so that was really really good for us and the other program is that uh, we have a, a, a commodity di distribution once a month what Dina knows all about and this is coming food for uh, at least 250 households a month and again no restrictions you can live anywhere in the county or another state for that matter and then I'm really proud of the last one that we do and that is a shut-in distribution for years we we knew that there was a need in CNT to get out to the seniors who, who are shut in they have no vehicle they have no transportation and Sunrise Church contacted me about two years ago to see if they could help us with anything and I said well you know shut-ins you know we don't have the ability to help them and they got on it and now we serve 60 to 70 households a month to shut-ins they provide all the work and the transportation and delivery to their homes and we provide the food so it's, it's a great partnership and they also come out every Tuesday, uh, the third Tuesday of every month, and they volunteer their muscle to help us with the commodity distribution. Because that commodity b distribution is huge in as much as we get pallets of food that are in cases, and we have to open up the cases and then sort the food, et cetera. So it's, it's challenging, but we do it. Um, and, and I want to tell you that throughout COVID-19, we never closed our doors. We, we were truly on the front lines. And Norm isn't here today, nor is Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, they, they know about the front line stuff. We changed our model completely. We do a drive-through now. We implemented no-touch kind of act transactions because people used to have to fill out a form and sign it. We don't do that anymore for the safety of the clients and for us. And we have not had anybody on our volunteer team get COVID and transmit it to other volunteers. We have had people who, of course, got COVID, but it was from a different source. We, you know, the tracing is really good. So that's good. Now, in calendar year 2021, we gave food to 25,000 individuals. We have grown <laughs> tremendously, yeah. And, and that's the three programs that I speak about. So yeah, I was stunned when I saw the numbers. I said, is that right? But it is. And that, that represents a little over 7,000 households. So there you go. And depending on the products at home, uh, that we have on hand, the client receives a minimum of two days, a, a minimum of two days supply of food. And we give out fresh fruit, vegetables, breads, desserts, meats, frozen entrees, canned goods, you know, staples, that kind of thing. And it's at least 50 pounds of food to every household. And it's usually quite more than that, closer to 100 pounds, because we're blessed. And uh, our donations are from local churches, businesses who have a surplus of something. Uh, the other day, grocery outlet called and he had 14 cases of oat milk that's shelf stable. So yeah, of course we take it. Uh, Sprouts Grab and Give every year, that program here in CNT, we receive those bags and I think we've got somewhere around 8,000 pounds of food from them this year for that. Grocery Outlet has an annual fundraiser for us. You go into the store and you're invited to donate $5 to the food bank. And this year, or last year I mean, we used the proceeds of that I event to be able to give a voucher to 60 clients that could be redeemed at their store, grocery outlet, for $50. So that was really cool, really good, yeah, really nice for us. And we also give out pet food. 
uh, one of our volunteers, and uh, yeah, sadly she's not here, Elizabeth McCandless goes out and buys dog food at Costco and donates it to the food bank for those pets. So, yeah. So that's it. I brought some uh, flyers with me. I'll leave them out on the table if anybody's interested. We have a distribution on Tuesday. We're going to serve at least 250 households. So it looks like it'll be more like about 270 as far as the, the food is concerned. So if you know of anybody who needs food, send them over to us for sure. That's what we're here for. Thank you. You want to give that to Mary? Yes, to Mary. I believe most of you know me. I'm Mary Ann Busick, and I'm here. Oh, sorry. All right, start again. I think you all know me anyway. I'm Mary Ann Busick. I've been here a long, long time. And I have just a little job today, and it was kind of curtailed, but we're going to do it anyway. Can you hear me? Good? Yes, okay. See this box of Band-Aids? Okay. Well, several weeks ago, a women's group was meeting in, in uh, Sunshine Hall. A young woman walked in, and she was asking for a drink. So we were able to give her a couple of bottles of water. Someone noticed, or more than one of us noticed, that she had like a scratch and there was blood on her arm. Well, then we had this problem. Where's a Band-Aid? Where's a Band-Aid when you need a Band-Aid? Well, someone did find a Band-Aid in her purse. And so we were able to give her some water. I didn't, we were eating that day. She didn't want to eat with us. That has happened before. People walk in. We invite them to eat with us. So, But we did give her bottles of water and a Band-Aid. Well, then we started thinking about why don't we have a Band-Aid? So not starting today, but later on, we're going to start a very small fundraiser to provide first aid kits for any room at the church that people meet in. So later on this year, you'll see us carrying around a little box that has a red cross on. Now, don't give me your coins for the kids. Keep your coins for Noisy Sunday. So if you have a few paper bills, you could put those in the box. There's the box. See? Now you know. And next is Judy, and she's going to talk about Calexico. Good morning. So my speech, which lasts a long time, is about the Calexico neighborhood house. And uh, it is the closest United Methodist Women's Mission to our church. It's about a two hour drive from Santee to Calexico, and uh, the neighborhood house there is a United Methodist Women Global Mission operated by the uh, entire group of American uh, women in the United Methodist Women, and of course the organization is worldwide. So uh, it's uh, closest, and it's also on our list of local charities because it is the closest. Uh, so at the end of the year, we awarded nine uh, funding packages to nine local charities, and it was one. So uh, I think that the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, reminds us of why this kind of charity is so important. Because Jesus was speaking to a group of the righteous, and he said, when I was hungry, you gave me food, and when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And 
when I was a stranger, you took me in. And when I was naked, you gave me clothing. And when I was in prison, you visited me. The group of people said, Lord, we didn't see you in those conditions. But uh, Jesus replied, if you do these things to the least of us, you have done it unto me, meaning the people with the least resources. Uh, so we remember that and we try to provide such things to our fellow humans, the people at Calexico. So they have several means of support. They have the community, they have individual organizations and collaborative partners. The participation comes in the form of volunteers locally or monetary support either. The services they provide, some of the services are listed on the banner. You may want to take a closer look at it. And uh, I have a few others. Child care for working parents, case management, parent education. It's a shelter for homeless women and children. It's uh, emergency food and utility assistance. We know how important utility assistance would be. And micro business support and community advocacy. So uh, we think that this sort of love for our neighbors who are less fortunate is critical. Uh, so you may want to check the list and uh, see uh, uh, the Diaper Resource Center. I was told that uh, the diapers are half price at the uh, shelter so that uh, people can better afford them. So thank you for your close attention. And the next person on the list, I'm sorry, I don't remember. It's, oh, my video, yes. I have a video to entertain you. <laughs> I'm going to direct your attention over here to our next poster, Mission Initiatives. Our program and organization with United Methodist Women, it focuses on missions. You say, what kind of missions are we focusing on? We're focusing on women, children, and our youth. Women have been empowered by leadership education opportunities, mission education, reading programs, tools of advocacy, and more. United Methodist Women also support programs and projects aimed at improving the special needs of women because of refugee status, immigration status, situations where they might be abused, high illiteracy, and their economic dependence, their educational disparities, and so much more. How do we support children? Our special emphasis of United Methodist Women is our children because women care for children. If children are raised with safety, security, food, shelter, education, and basic human rights, children will grow up to be loving and secure adults. United Methodist women believe in responding to Jesus' mandate to care for the least of these. Children often don't have a voice, so United Methodist women step in and become advocates on their behalf. We are committed to children globally through our education centers, like Calexico, our education opportunities for refugee children, homes for street children, advocacy against sexual exploitation, child labor, educational institutions, and much more. Now, how do we help our youth? 
United Methodist women work with our youth programs globally and projects that support and empower our youth. United Methodist women also enable youth to be in mission by supporting of the US2 program, a mission intern program for global justice and for volunteers. A special emphasis of this organization is to involve young women in all ministries and leadership of United Methodist Women. 18 in college university, women consulted groups help direct the program of United Methodist Women to be inclusive with our young women. Missions is a presence, it's your relationship, it's witness, and it's sharing. Mission is refusing to turn away when tears are shed from violence or injustice and suffering for God's creation. Let's remember our mission moment. Here is Kathleen. Good morning. So, ask a question, where does the money go? Well, as you can see up here, we have five channels of giving. In 2018 and 2019, United Methodist Women Mission giving 8.9 million to 288 national and international programs. The five channels of giving pictured up here show the various ways that our members give undesignated funds to our organizations. What a local unit of United Methodist Women give, a portion of the pledge to mission is kept by their respective conference for its own district and conference administration and the membership development expenses. The remainder of the pledge and the other channels of mission given are forwarded to the national office. The elected board of directors votes on the budget each year. So some of the national mission institutes, we support nearly nine national mission institutions across the United States serving the needs of marginalized and vulnerable communities in these areas. Care for children, education and develop youth, create economic opportunities, transform neighborhoods and housing. Regional missionaries, focusing on issues of health, gender equality, and elimination of violence among women and support for the uprooted and the marginalized. They have training programs, workshops, strategic planning, and networking. Excuse me. Grants and scholarships, international and national mission grants, cultivate cultivation grants for United Methodist Women Missionary Conferences, social justice issue grants, Teresa Hoover Services and Global Citizenship Award, international and national scholarships. In 2020, we awarded grants for COVID relief and prevention, $189,000 internationally and $73,000 nationally. Services, services and advocacy work on peace and justice, education, the rights of children, human rights, and farm workers' rights. Our work in partnership with coalitions in many justice issues to extend its reach. Leadership and social action training, mission education, deaconess and home missionary programs and more. What we do not fund, we do not, United Method of Women do not fund projects and programs that do not benefit women, children or youth. Don't comply with our UMC social principles, are administered by designated discriminatory organizations we are committed to transparency in our funding sources, especially with our memberships. One thing that I know is that our financial strength is indicative of the love we have for those that we serve. And now we're going to have uh, Sandy Hall come and talk to you about, about the money. <laughs> Thank you. Besides giving money to the national we also have what we call designated giving, and this is organizations that we decide at the end of the year how much money we have and where we want it to go. The first one is Voices for Children. It's a service that trains and supervises CASAs, court-appointed special advocates, to represent a foster child and advocate for them until the child ages out of foster care. 
Minette Burrell and Kathy Eastman from our church are involved in this. And then New Intra Casa was founded in 1972 by the Wesleyan Service Guild, which is now known as the United Methodist Women. It's a home located in downtown San Diego for youth and women transitioning from incarceration. It is committed to helping individuals recover from substance abuse and co-occurring mental health disorders. Their goal is to educate and promote growth and allow for healing to begin at every level, including mind, spirit, and body. And Marty has told you about the food bank, which we also support and the Collectico House that we sent a check to. Then there's San Diego Storefront. This is an overnight shelter and day center funded by the County of San Diego Mental Services, which provides overnight shelter and day um, center for homeless youth and runaways. Services include family reunification, information and referral counseling, case management, independent living, and social skills development, job development, transportation assistance, food, and clothing. And then there's Include Autism, formerly now known as Community Transition Academy. It's a nonprofit community-based social behavior development program held after school during the school breaks and on Saturday for kids and teens affected with the autism spectrum disorder. Stand Up for Kids, San Diego. Since 1990, the organization has operated four programs, four core programs, outreach, drop-in center, street outreach, which includes snacks and a shower program, mentoring and housing support. Homeless kids are the most likely target for human traffickers, pornographers, and gangs. Stand Up for Kids' main focus is on prevention, providing an array of resources and services to help homeless youth on their journey to self-sufficient adulthood. UPCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, our donation is specified for the CalPAC conference fire and other disaster victims. Angel Foster Family Network is a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating safe, stable, loving homes for infants and toddlers in foster care throughout the county of San Diego. The money that our UMW raises <coughs> by our various fundraisers goes to organizations that support women and children. We could not make the difference in their lives without the tremendous support we receive from all of you. For that, we say a big thank you. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. When I was speaking earlier about Band-Aids, I didn't tell you where we thought the young woman came from. We believe she came from Las Colinas. And we were one of her next steps. And we all hope she's done well since then. But she looked just like any of my granddaughters, any of your grandchildren, any of your children. Just this young woman who got in trouble, and we helped a tiny little bit. My next job today. OK, thank you. Each year, UMW chooses a special person to be a recipient of the Special Mission Recognition Award and their reason for choosing that person, often the person chosen is one who works behind the scenes without little, with little recognition. This year, however, this mother of two sons and one granddaughter is one who has been in the forefront of our group 
The almost unanimous reason for choosing this member was she got us through the pandemic. Our nominee's day starts at 3.30 each morning. Besides her daily regular duties, she manages to make calls on shut-ins as well as keeping church staff informed of UMW activities. She had a birthday yesterday, so happy belated birthday, Judy Menzer, our past our past SUMW president who has been the one who's held us together as the past two years. I'm sorry, I misread something, but sorry. So Judy, come up here, please. And here's your lovely pen right into your hand. I've been known to hang on to things. <laughs> Thank you, and that is well deserved. She did keep us together. She was our glue. She um, learned how to do Zoom meetings and text and everything else that went along with uh, meeting virtually, so we really appreciate her service. Uh, right now, I'm not going to ask them to come forward, but as I call your name, if you could stand, I'd like to introduce the uh, 22, 2022 uh, Santa United Methodist Women's Slate of Officers. Uh, our co-vice presidents are Barbara Springer and Mary Ann. Our, our secretary is Kathy Eastman. Our treasurer is Sandy Hall. Our spiritual growth is Susan James. Hospitality and membership is Janice Wilson. She's way over there. Program resources are Judy Menzer and MJ. She's back there, MJ. And uh, we have a nominating committee, but I'm not sure if they're here today. Um, they go in, a, um, in, in year cycles. In 2022, it will be Sue Beagle. 2023 will be Midge Farrar. And 2024 will be Kay Bellchamber. And uh, the last office is president and... Oh, there you are. There's Kay. Sorry. There's Kay, one of our um, nominating committee. And last uh, is Barbara Reimer, and I will be the president this year. So thank you very much, everyone.
First, I want to give thanks to our UMW and for the ways that they lead us and guide us in mission in so many wonderful ways. Thank you, ladies, for all that you do. As we often do, um, we're going to say all of the prayers of thanksgiving together, and then afterwards I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can say, here are our prayers, or alleluia, however the Spirit might take you, and then we'll do prayers of concern and other things that we have. Um, again, we're so thankful to the UMW for their leadership and for the ways that they led us today in worship. Um, we pray for Robin and Steve who, in fact, we need to do a special little prayer, and I'll do that at the end, But um, because this is their last Sunday with us. Um, and on Tuesday, I believe they're going to be heading on their way to Tennessee. So we're going to be praying for them um, right after I finish all of the, the community prayers, just a special prayer of, uh, of well wishes and uh, safe travels. Um, thank you for... Uh, being here with us and doing so many wonderful things for this church and for this community. Um, thank you. Uh, we're also thankful for, I, I know personally, I'm thankful for all the prayers and we felt them in our family and luckily our family's on the mend and we're almost back. Um, we've still got a little bit of just sniffles and things, but we are grateful to you for the support that you've given us in the past couple of weeks through all of that as well. Um, we pray these things and we say, Lord, in your mercy, hallelujah. We also have prayers um, of concern, um, not so much concern, but one that we want to lift up is that this week is the last week that Door to the Future will be with us. Um, they're going to be moving on to a new location, um, and we pray uh, thanksgiving for the wonderful ministry that we've had, the years of wonderful ministry we've had with Door to the Future. Uh, we also pray for both them and for our church as we enter this period of uncertainty, but that we hope that all people involved find ways to connect and glorify God in the coming months and years. Um, we are grateful for that. Uh, Midge Harder asks prayers for Brother Jack, who initially refused chemo for his cancer, but is going forward with treatment. Uh, we pray for him today. Um, Steve and Robin ask prayers for their safe travels on Tuesday. Kathy Eastman um, says, thank you for cards and kind words and the passing of her brother. Um, we pray for you in that. Marianne Busick asks prayers for healing for her daughter, Valerie's husband, who was recently diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, we will be praying for him in the midst of that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And let us have a, a quick prayer um, for safe travels for the Sofrekuses. Lord, we are so grateful for this wonderful family and for the ways that they have touched so many lives, both in this room and in our community. As they begin this new journey on their life, we ask that, as always, you show them that your presence is with them always, that you keep them safe, that you uh, bring them into the lives of others who need it, and that you help them to, to be a light for them the same way that they have been a light for so many here. We ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And now Bart's going to come forward and share our prayers. Our uh, community prayer. God, we lift our prayers to you today. Those spoken aloud and those kept on our hearts. As we lift them all to you, God, help us remember that as members of your body, we are called to care for one another. If one of us celebrates, we rejoice with joy. If one of us suffers, we all suffer together. As you surround us, God, let us surround one another, guided by your love and grace. God, we give thanks today for the United Methodist women of this church. Their service and dedication to mission are an example to all of us as they serve your church and your kingdom. Through their consistent work and study, they have brought blessings to so many. They, in turn, are a blessing to all of us and to you, God. 
God, we pray for our world as the pandemic continues to create uncertainty and frustration. God, for all the healthcare workers and first responders who are tired and drained. We pray for your continued strength and patience, God. We also lift all those whose lives have been affected and thrown into confusion. And we pray for their comfort and continued courage. We pray to be a source of constant love for each other at this time as we serve one another in any way we can. God, we pray as a people who are called to serve your world. Fill us with the strength that only you provide. We serve so that you may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ, who showed us the perfect life in service to you. We also pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a people who have received so many gifts from God, we are able to return some of those gifts to God through our service and through our giving. Will our ushers please come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Loving God, we, you bless us today. We are surrounded by those present here who have dedicated their gifts and their lives to your service. God, receive these gifts of our resources and our lives dedicated and given to you. We pray all of this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn, Pass It On.
true, a wonderful, amazing thing that's part of our calling is to go forth and to share that love. And the UMW today has shown us ways, tangible ways, that they have been involved in doing that. And we can all go forth and do the same. So I hope that as we go forth, let us share that love in tangible ways, in the ways that has been modeled for us today. Go forth and know that God goes with you and that you are loved. Amen.